Hello and welcome to another video on what is cross-border payment. So what I did in the couple last video is to describe why am I going to learn this in the roadmap. So I asked ChatGPT to help me and the problem was I, that was used was develop an effective roadmap to learn cross-border payment by dedicating one hour daily for a mid-advanced English user. So the ChatGPT output was, well, week one, foundation and cross-border payments. So the day one, introduction to cross-border payment. Read articles or watch video that provide an overview of cross-border payments. Their important and key challenge. Day two, type of cross-border payment methods, which is something that I'm going to dedicate today, right? Explore different cross-border payment methods such as wire transfer, ACH, e-wallets, and cryptocurrencies. Day three, regulatory framework. Study the regulatory landscape for cross-border payments, including AML, anti-money laundering, and KUC, know your customers, compliance. Day four, SWIFT and correspondent banking. Learn about SWIFT and its role in facilitating secure communication between financial institutions in cross-border transactions. So SWIFT uh, and the correspondent banking. They buy foreign exchange and exchange rate. Understand foreign exchange market, okay? Currency pairs and factors affecting exchange rate in cross-border payments. Week two, cross-border payment processes. Day six, payment message type, deep, uh, dive deeper into switch message type commonly used in cross-border payments and their specific purpose. Day seven, Nostra and Vostra accounts. Explore Nostra and Vostra accounts and they're significant in cross-border payment is cross-border transaction. <clears throat> payment gateway and providers, study various payment gateway and cross-border payment. Service providers, comparing their features and fees. So payment gateways and providers, cross-border payment challenge. Day nine, investigate common challenges in cross-border payments, such as fees, processing times, and currency conversion. Day 10, risk management in cross-border payments. Understanding risk management strategies to mitigate fraud and security risk in cross-border transactions. Very, very important. Week 3, emergency trends and advancements. Day 1, day 11, digital currency and blockchain. Explore the impact of digital currency and blockchain technology on cross-border payments. Day 12, FinTech innovation in cross-border payments. Investigate how FinTech companies are disrupting traditional cross-border payment processes such as WISE, Stripe, and that kind of thing. Day 13, cross-border payments APIs. So learn about APIs using cross-border payment systems for seamless integration. Day 14, case study and real-world examples. Day 15, current trends and future outlook. In continuation, which is now practical applications and spend the next five days trying out cross-border payment process practically, use online resource or test account to experiment with transactions. Day 21, review and reflect. Use the, la use the last day to review what you have learned through the three weeks, reflect on your progress and identify areas for further improvement. It is funny because it mentioned only 20 days to learn about a specific topic as a mid-English user. Okay, so in the day one here, uh, the intro to cross-border payment. So from Stripe cross-border payment 101 and WISE cross-border payment, which is the two source here. Okay, this is the two source. So Stripe uh, mentioned that 
sending money across borders can be complex, challenging, a challenging process with regulatory requirements by each uh, state, by each uh, government, fees and risk to navigate. Okay, this is just to identify is this common challenge uh, of here. So it can be complex because if you don't know what it is, it can be complex, challenging. It can be a challenging process to receive or send payments across border. It can be complex, challenging process. It's a challenging process with regulatory requirement. Again, specifically to governments, fees and risk to navigate. So the reason of learning about this is because it allowed me to open to new markets, reach new customers, and diversify my revenue stream. This is the reason I am doing this, you know? It's because I want to escape to this local change and I want to open up my opportunities. So I want to expose myself to that. Okay, so with the right payment method and strategy, two key words, so with the right payment methods and strategies, business can reduce costs, improve cash flow, and accelerate growth without the accelerate growth. Okay, so here we're going to explore the various type of cross-border payment available, the type of cross-border payments available, the benefit on downside, or the trade-off of cross-border payment for business, and the process of receiving and sending cross-border payments. This is from the strike. Uh, and when it comes down to wives, so when they describe that, okay, uh, cross-border payment after all refers to receipt, so is the movement of funds between national borders. So it can be either uh, consumers or business. So cross-border transaction doesn't involve the customer or merchant's location, something very, very important. So it doesn't involve the customer or merchant's location, but where the business is registered and the car used to pay is issue. Okay? It, it is relevant to the business location in which country issue your car. That's one of the thing here. This is one of the uh, 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 you may want you may think is uh, this is for individuals, okay, or for consumers and even for business. That's what matters in the cross-border transaction is where the business is registered, okay, is where the business is registered. And the car used to pay is issue. Okay, who emitted that car? The who emit that car you are using to pay? Okay, so this is the the definition of the, of the uh, cross border payments. Okay, so the cross border payments. Uh, is the movement of funds between borders. Uh, it can be either a consumers or a business, and there's some challenge involved because it can be complex. If you don't know how to do that, it can be complex. It can be a challenging process. You also have to deal with some regulatories and requirements with fees in risk to navigate. So my reason to go and learn this is because I want, I want to expand as a business to new markets, new customers, 
and diversify my revenue stream. That's the whole idea here. So with the right payment methods and strategies, business can reduce costs to improve. Exactly. So with the right payment methods and strategies, business can reduce cost, improve cash flow, and accelerate growth. So keep looking at here in the stripe, okay? The type in day two, if you remember here, the, the day two here is this. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so day two, type of cross-border payment methods like this, uh, is this. So uh, cross-border payment methods. A payment is considered a cross-border payment when the payer and the payee are located in different countries. Exactly. Okay. This is cross-border payment. A payment is considered, okay. So a payment, a payment is considered cross-border Okay, a payment is considered cross-border. A payment is considered cross-border payment when the payer and the payee are located in different countries. Regardless of the mechanism on which the payment occur. But the definition of why it's more like precise you know the definition of why it's more precise because cross-border transaction doesn't involve customer or merchants locations but where the business is registered and where your car and when so where the business is registered and where your cash and where your car to pay was issued Mm -hmm. where the car to pay was emitted. Mm -hmm. Where the car to pay was emitted. This is a more precise definition of this. So for any given transaction, the ideal choice of payment method depends on various factors. Such as the amount of money being transferred, the speed of the transaction, the currency involved, and the fees associated with each method. Business and individuals who need to initiate a cross-border payment should consider the different methods of cross-border payment available and choose the most suitable method for the specific needs. There are several common methods of cross-border payment, including Wire transfer, or in Spanish, eh, eh, transferencias de cable, cableadas. A wire transfer is an electronic transfer of funds between two different banks or financial institutions. And when you talk about financial institution, it can be either uh, venture capitalists, private equity, okay? In different parts of the world, Wire transfer are transmitted using various wire networks that service different geographic areas. This type of payment is commonly used for large transactions. Among limits, vary based on locations and network and can be sent in different currency. So wire transfers is uh, there are electronic transfers of fund between two different banks or financial institutions in different parts of the world where transfer are transmitting using various wire networks that service different geographic areas. This type of payment is commonly used large what are what what type of wire networks? You know it's like what are uh, wire networks? Mm, uh, 
Bang. Bang War Networks. No, it's like types of wire networks. Yeah, let me ask ChatGPT here to see again. And uh, okay, wire networks, whether it's Ethernet, coaxial cable network, token ring, fiber optic network, power line communication, PLC, telephone network, serial communication, universal serial, RS23 and HDMA, HDM type of wire networks in banking mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. so through various wire networks Okay. Mm -hmm. What transfer a CG, a wallet, and cryptocurrency? Okay, so this is the different types types of wire networks in banking. Okay. So in day two here. Okay. Types. Types of wire network in banking. You have is the wire uh, the Swift Society for Net for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. So Swift is one of them. Swift. It's a global messaging network used by banks and financial institutions to securely and accurately send and receive financial information, including payment instruction, account statement, and other transaction related messages. Swift codes are used to identify banks and their branch in this network. ACH. Or automatic clearing house. ACH or automatic clearing house. We're not SWIFT stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. <clears throat> <clears throat> FedWire. FedWire is an electronic fund 
transfer system operated by the Re Re Federal Reserve in the United States. Team some Fedwire. Fedwire is the electronic fund transfer system operated by the Federal Reserve in the United States. Whew. Holy moly. Is electronic fund transfer system operated by the Federal Reserve in the US. Fed wire. Mm. This must be written in C, my friend. The Federal Reserve. Beam, sun, taps, clearing house automated payment system is the same day. Cleaning house automated payment system is a same day electronic fund transfer using the United Kingdom for high value urgent payment such as house purchase and large business transaction. Chaps. Holy moly. <laughs> Chaps. SEPA or SCPA. Uh, single Euro payment area. Is an initiative in the European Union that aims to create a single integrated market for euro denominated payment. It allows for easy and effective cross border euro transfer between accounts in SEPA participating countries. But it's a single euro payment area for the SEPA or SEPA in Spanish. The single euro payment areas. Visa Net. Visa Net is Visa property electronic payment network that connect Visa card holders, merchants, and financial institutions worldwide. It processes an authorized transaction made with Visa brand cards. Visa net, holy hell. So my credit card is Visa and it has a Visa net. So all of this payment, all of this payment, all of this uh, payment, all of the payment are processed through the Visa net, through the Visa net. And then you have the MasterCard network, similar to Visa net, but this is from MasterCard network facilitates transaction made using MasterCard brand credits and debit cards. Mm. MasterCard networks to process payment. And then you also have the ATM networks. Banks also use networks for their automated teller machine. Automated teller machine. Máquinas automatizadas de habla, which enable customers to access their account, withdraw cash, and perform various banking transactions. Or puntos de vent, or ATMs. <clears throat> Online banking network. This network enables customers to access their accounts and perform banking transactions through the internet. This network uses secure protocols such as HTTPS to protect sensitive data during online transactions. In-house banking networks. Some large banks may have their private and secure wide networks to connect different branches and departments within the institution, allowing for inter internal communication, data sharing, and centralized management. <coughs> Hmm. 
Mm, online banking networks. Online banking networks. As well as the in-house banking networks. In-house banking networks. Some larger banks may have private and secure wide network to connect different branches and department with the institution, allowing for internal communication, data sharing, and centralized management. Holy hell, man. We're definitely we're definitely just just pawn man. It's like we're just definitely passing stuff. You know what I mean? It's like holy shit. <laughs> Holy moly, Jesus, okay. So here I'm exploring is wire transfers, okay, which is the first. And here I'm exploring is cross-border payment, type of wire networks, this is one of them, and then types of cross-border payment, okay. Type of wire networks in bank and type of cross border payment. So here you have is the is, so here you have the wire transfers. Okay, it's an electronic transfer between two different bank or financial institution. Wire transfers. It's a transfer, uh, it's an electronic transfer, an electronic transfer funds between different banks or financial institutions. Wire transfer. In different parts of the world, wire transfers are transmitted using various wire networks. That's one of the things. In different parts of the world, wire transfers are transmitted using different wire networks that serve that service different geographic areas. And because of that, in different parts of the world, wire transfers are transmitted using various wire network that serves different geographic areas. <clears throat> this type of payment is commonly used for large transactions. Define large transaction. <clears throat> a monthly very very based on location and networks. Wire transfer. Okay. 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 So that is okay, wire transfers. Okay, 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 uh, so just to recap about the cross-border payments. Cross-border payments involve the movement of funds between borders and it doesn't involve the customer or merchant's locations. What it counts is where the business is located and where that car to pay was issued. So the challenge here of sending and receiving payment is several. So it can be complex, especially if you don't know how that works. You also have to deal with some regulatory and requirements, as well as fees associate, and you have to navigate risk, okay? And it can be a challenging process. However, the whole point of this is to you as a business open to new markets, find new shoppers or new customers, and diversify your source of revenues. Okay? Diversify your source of revenue. So by so choosing the right payment methods and strategies, you can improve your cash flow, reduce the business cost, as well as accelerate growth. Okay, and we'll explore the various of this.
So the stripe counting. In the stripe counting, you want to explore is the different type of cross-border payments, the trade-off of these four business, as well as the process of sending and receiving cross-border payments. Right? So uh, right now we are here on the wire transfers. Okay, type of cross-border. So let me do this. So type of type of wire network in banking and then type of cross-border payments you know so the first is swift so swift is the society for worldwide interbank financial telecommunications so swift is global okay so SWIFT is global messaging network used by bank and financial institutions to securely and accurately send and receive financial information, including payment instructions, account statement, and other transaction-related messages. SWIFT, uh, SWIFT codes are used to identify banks and their branch in this network. They also you have the AC. ACH, okay, which is uh, HE is a network used for electronic fund transfer, EFT, electronic fund transfers within a specific country. Within a specific country. Within a specific country. It allows financial institutions to process large volume of credit and debit transactions such as direct deposit, payroll, bill payments and recurring transfers. Mm -hmm. But ACH is a network used according to uh, ChatGPT. So ACH, I would like to double check this with, that's right, with Investopedia. According to Natcha, the associated responsible for this transfer, the HCH network is a batch processing system that banks and other financial institutions use to aggregate this transaction for processing. But again, this is ACH transfers are electronic bank to bank money transfer processed through the ACH network. But this is for within they say this within a specific country the automatic clearing house mm -hmm. the automatic clearing house social payments such as app and as Vemo and cell also use the network when you send money to friends and family in an ACH direct payment transaction, the person sending the money sees an ACH debit appear in their bank account. Mm. Okay, okay. <clears throat> okay, okay. So type of network in banking. Okay. So type of network in banking, you got SWIFT, ACH, FedWires, CHAPS, which is on the UK, SEPA from Euro, VisaNet from Visa, MasterCards, ATM networks, and online banking networks, and in-house banking networks. Okay, so that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.